found one easy lesson. The sight picture, the way you lay the front post in the rear notch, is part of the story, but it is just stuff that acts as trimming. Unimportant. Of little consequence. That is, compared to the really big thing we are building up to. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Askins from Shooter's Bible Treasury, New Second Edition, originally published 1955. The poor benighted hombre who buys a one-hand shooting iron and thereafter looks about for advice as to how to hit with it is really asking for trouble. Advice about how to be a pistol whiz is like all other kinds of counsel. It is free and oft times misleading. Whether he simply talks to the next man on the firing line, buys a book and peruses it, or writes to the nearest firearms editor, he is apt to wind up confused and saddened. The woods are full of gents who are pistol coaches, self-anointed. Maybe they have never killed so much as a cottontail, never punched out a possible at any range, never were guilty of a single original thought in the somewhat involved gymnastics of six-gun juggling, but they don't hesitate to pop off and especially to the poor innocent who has just bought his first hardware. No, no, don't stand like that. Get your feet farther apart. Put your hand in your pocket. See, look at me. This is the way. The expert is correcting. The neophyte is sweating. Or maybe he isn't such a recruit anymore. Possibly he has burned up a few thousand rounds and his problems have really grown complex. The Vandal confesses. Our hammers, our sticks, this furtive sporting life. Oh, our gasoline. Clothed in low-rent autobiographies, we slouch toward eviction like dying brickworks. Outside is day, a nice big one, floor upon floor of well-mixed cocktails, and beyond the smog line, a dissimulation of small birds. In darkness, the city is a basement. We hunch in its hallways like Goya's cats, low to the ground and brindled with enigmatic rashes, stiff in the joints. Glued together with rye or blow or glue, we are a regular family. Newspaper boxes, billboards, SUVs, Coke machines, all is lost but for their breaking. We itch and prosper heavenward on bands of grit and smoke. Our names, unknown, a bloody racket, car alarm, nothing personal. We rip it up, all right. The trouble's not the tear down, it's the stall of afters when our hands hang. The asking each to each what's next as we lean inside like crummy tables. No wonder we don't feel so well. Look here, soup is crawling out of our bowls. The Midtown Scotiabank's topmost light has turned that cloud the color of cheesies. There is a tenderness in things, in things ruined. As if, freed from functions we bend them to, they are newborn to the prime, unalphabeted world. As though this were possible. It doesn't matter. Burn it. Glass sparkles my hair, my skin refined with ashes. I've pinched what tools I own. Material things which have no soul could not be true objects for my love. Will I see you soon, candled in the street-lit chalk of some immoderate place? We could stand in wreckage and adored where nothing ever fades before it falls. Meeting Walter Benjamin. A long lake in a swan-throated bed, longer than wide by seventy miles. In his loneliness you mistake him for shade creaking from the poplars, his gait that way, eyes down, back lit, its yet againness. He mistakes you in kind for a snag of brome, for in your loneliness, you have forgotten the grammar of description. 
no, the why of it, and become just another little bit of what's there, unable as grass is to explain itself. Here, above the mud line of a Saskatchewan valley, and he has never seen one. When he speaks, it's from midpoint over the dog-hued water, his voice thrown, a bond loosened and winging on the updraft past your ear. It's real, he says, your disappointment. Wind stirs up hill color like a stick in paint, fovist with hidden deer in this seed-heavy fall among a wet ear's curious late bloomers, the air convex, retinal. Follow his eye. Angelus Novus up against the barbed wire, blown backward, disconsolate as anyone with a grasp of history. You've read that grace abides in a law of downward motion. He says despair is in the details. Don't look, he tells you, then look. Under the sun. Rain is the merging of cool air with warm under general conditions of humidity. Try to remember, it has nothing to do with love or grief. This is the consolation of philosophy. It's out of our hands. The business of bars and stores, our separate beds, the garbaged offices of alleyways, is aging. It sighs in the blood like salt, slows us, and is why our hearts are heaviest on the moment of waking. The weight we ferry, the fright, the long vowel opening at the center of a consonant world that draws the hurt up, an empty bowl while history's rebar is replaced and a species coughs its lungs out in another room. Private lives of insects and the single notes that move them, hard-won courage of raccoon and crow who eat our garbage and hate us, are foreclosed. We are lonely. We are here. Inside, a vestigial swimmer bears memory like a phantom pain of when the earth was new and we were a promise in the sex of its making, its heat and pools, cells, random, liquid birth. In the molecular ache of land as it cooled, when, before tears, before property, it rained for more than a million years. Found. The Birds of British Columbia, from The Birds of British Columbia, Upland Game Birds, published by the British Columbia Provincial Museum, 1971. In no other game bird but the ruffled grouse do the tones of gray, black, cinnamon, and white shade and blend with such quiet harmony. Child of the wilderness that he is, in the full dark pupil of that eye, surrounded by an iris of October's own brown, seem always to dwell the brooding shadows of the great forest he loves so well. And in the molding of him, nature seems to have embodied all the beauty, all the charm, all the inexplicable strangeness and romance of the autumnal woods, and produced her feathered masterpiece. Always is he the woodland's pride, alert, instinct with life, and filled with a spirit and a dash that furnishes, in such mixed cover as we were hunting this day, the very climax of shooting with the shotgun. Thrasher. Yellow legs ekes lower at nightfall to a stick nest brambled in the shade kill, doing for himself, deft as a badger in a hammock. Mornings, towing racked heights of the cottonwood, he flaps his brown flag above alkaline slough beds, over plowlands attesting to the back and forth of work, their brown degrees scriven by road allowance cut at right angles through shriven weeds, fence posts bracketing brown rut lines slantwise in relief. In relief at the topmost, he mimics domestic, migrant, Spaniel, spring peepers, quacks, irks, and gurgles akin to a four-stroke in heavy water. 
may slightly off. None respond. His own call is the vinyl scratch between tracks, a splice point. He was hatched that way, ferruginous, a wet transistor clacking from the egg in which he had lain curled as an ear with an itch inside. He carries on like AM radio, like a prison rodeo, recounts loser baseball teams, jerry-riggers, part-timers, those paid in scrip, anyone who has come out of retirement once too often. He is playbacks, do-overs, repeats, repeats the world's clamorous list, makes it his, replete, and fledges from persistence what he is.